Working on farms can be dangerous and working with grain storage has some inherent risks. The three basic steps to follow to reduce those risks. The first is to identify any hazards. Ask everyone that works on the farm if they've identified any potential hazards or if they've got any concerns about the jobs they're doing. The other people to ask is of course the workplace health and safety professionals. The second step is then to identify what's the likelihood of the risk occurring and what's the likely severity if it did occur. The third and most important step is to eliminate the likelihood or the severity of each of those hazards. One of the most dangerous parts of grain storage is climbing a ladder. And that's a risk that we can't avoid, but we need to manage it. We do that by having a compliant ladder, using a safety harness, and like everything with grain storage, have a plan in case something does go wrong. So those are the fundamentals of safety in grain storage. It's also worth thinking about the bigger picture. Think about the future. Have we got room to expand the storage without running into trees or power lines? It's also good to have a nice big area to turn trucks around and a solid base to tip them up safely and operate your augers safely. It's also good if you can find a site not too close to a house where kids might be playing or that the dust might interfere. Another safety consideration is getting the right type of storage for the grain that you want to store. Obviously cone bottom silos are the safest because you shouldn't need to hop in or out to empty them. If you're storing something like fertiliser or feed grain, you may need a silo with a steeper cone so that it flows out without getting stuck. When you fill and empty the silo, use the centre holes. This makes sure you don't load the silo unevenly, potentially causing it to collapse. When buying silos, consider its safety features. Things like grand operated lids, sight glasses, ladders with safety cages and handrails at the top and ideally it would have somewhere to apply phosphine at ground level. Before hopping in a silo, make sure the lids and the access points are open and it's had time to vent. Drink plenty of water so you're hydrated. Make sure you've got a dust mask and the appropriate equipment. It's also really important to let someone know where you're going to be, so that if something goes wrong, they can come and help you out. If the silo's had damp or wet grain in it, test for the gas levels. Carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide can be quite dangerous. Make sure the auger or conveyor is turned off and can't be operated while you're inside the silo. If you do need to get in to dislodge grain, wear a safety harness and stay on the ladder above the level of the grain at all times. Have someone outside within earshot so that they can help you if you need a hand. If ever you do get trapped under grain, remain still and calm and call for help, as movement can make the situation worse. Make sure anyone that's operating grain storage equipment is properly trained and shown how to do the job. Make sure guards and covers on augers are all in place and make sure if you're tired or stressed you don't operate grain storage equipment. Grain fumigation is possibly one of the most hazardous components to on-farm storage. Always follow the label recommendations for dose rates and protective clothing. Don't rely on the smell of phosphine. By the time you've smelt it, you've already been exposed to dangerous levels. Personal phosphine monitors are also a good investment and make sure you put up a sign to warn others that the silo is under fumigation. For more information on grain storage safety or to contact your grain storage specialist, go to storedgrain.com.au.